Hey there comic book fans. I figured I'd uh, finally make a video showing off David Mazzuchelli's Daredevil Born Again Artist Edition. I got this one back when it came out, uh, I don't even know how long ago now, last year sometime. But I never quite got around to making a video of it. I have a few more artist editions that I'll have to make videos of. But um, uh, for size comparison, that's the size of the original art. That is the size of an original comic, so it's pretty big, um, as are all the artist editions. This is one of the modern size ones. The Some of the silver and golden age artist editions are even bigger than this, but it starts off with a nice page blown up of Daredevil. You can see all the white out that he went through. Nice cover. This is the stuff um, that was written by Frank Miller. What year is this? Is that a year on it when it came out? Uh, originally published in Daredevil issues 227, 228, 229, 230, 31, 32, and 33. Um, what year was that? Let me look at this one. This is copyright 1985 Marvel Comics group on that one. So this is back in... Uh, 85 nice pages and then matter of fact this was the th this was the daredevil stuff where i started buying daredevil again i had uh start i had started collecting daredevil with the frank miller just before frank miller took over on issue 157 and i probably bought all the way up to issue 200 then stopped buying it and then started buying it again with uh 227 when frank miller was writing it again now here's something interesting that i never thought they would do this is a vellum overlay you can see that's actually a type of tracing paper that oh, looks like they lost the logo here too that must have fallen off um but this is what artists used to do when they wanted to they wanted this art to be in a certain color this art right here on the overlay to be in a certain color while this art remains black they do it on uh, here let me show you this is a pad of vellum tracing paper. I don't think anyone really uses this anymore in the computer age. And this pad is so old. I have I don't use it anymore even. But it's just a tracing paper that you can see through. So you could place the art underneath it and in ink right on top of it. And then who's ever doing the color separations back before computer days? could just take a photostat of this and make it one color. But I, I mean, that's, it's amazing that they actually printed this on vellum. I mean, that, that's not regular paper, that's a sheet of vellum. So it's amazing to me that they took the time. And here we can see, a lot. this is a uh, do a shade or craft tint paper where they got these grays where you use a, there's two chemicals one chemical makes a lighter gray, one chemical makes a darker, darker gray. So, um, this is all still technically black and white. The camera sees it as black and white, but I'll pick up the gray. It looks like he only used it sometimes, he used it on the opening page. Because this here is Zipatone, another way to get a gray. It's a little pattern of dots that you hear too, that you paste down on the original art. More zip of tone behind the kingpin. Nice. David Mazzuchelli, even when he was just starting out in the beginning, had a great sense of drama and where to put the blacks down to tell the story. More zip of tone. You can actually see the clear edge of the zip of tone right there. And I'm still not sure why they did this all throughout the 80s. They were always, for some production reason, which I don't know, they clipped the corners of a lot of pages. I don't know if it was to fit them on some sort of uh, stat machine or something, but they were. if you look at pages, especially from the 80s, they've got a lot of clipped corners that I still don't know why that is. And here you can see there must have been some vel vellum overlay on this. You can see these uh, 
tape uh, bullseye like things here those are registration marks that's how you get the vellum to line up with the original art is you put these bullseyes here and then you put bullseyes on the sheet of vellum here so that they can up oh, there's one of them so that when they line that up with that it's in the right well there's one down there there's a bullseye down here and there's one here and when you line them up you know it's in the right place which is why you need three of them in order to line something up or four as you did over here just to make sure great overhead shot of Matt Murdock in bed oops I keep bumping into the tripod but just I love this this Mazzicelli art look at all this wonderful architectural detail he puts in there Sir print blue that means there was an overlay on this page I wonder what happened to these overlays I'll have to I have to look through the original book to see what they all are. And making his own tone down there with some cross hatching. This is like looking at the original art. It's so nice. There's a nice shot of Daredevil. Once again, he spots his blacks and all the musculature real well. Uh, here's some more craft tint paper. Oh, look at this. He actually, you can see where he pasted, you can see a line along there. So he didn't want to use a whole sheet of craft tint paper when he was only using the gray, cra the uh, dual shade or craft tint on one part of it. So he pasted this piece of uh, dual shade or craft tint paper on top of a regular piece of paper. That's interesting. Looks like he did it over here too. You can actually see the line where it was pasted down on there. So I guess he was using this just for the flashbacks in this issue. Interesting. See that stuff you get? And once again, same thing here. Up in these, uh, you can see the, the green dots with uh, correct spelling, uh, lettering corrections in them. That's what they are. Nice big explosion. End of chapter one. This was a very, very good Daredevil story too. And these handles are too long. He keeps repeating that uh, down shot on Matt Murdock. He's sleeping in a lousy bed now. Uh, he must have had uh, Sir Print Blue. He must have had the city behind the kingpin there, but I guess the overlay is lost. wonder who lost the overlays on this stuff. Or else they just didn't want to print vellum for all the stuff, only the covers. Because I imagine it was uh, expensive to stick a vellum, some vellum leafs in this uh, expensive edition. Kingpin lifting weights. Love those little marks he makes all in the clothing. Serpent red in reverse yellow, black, and blue. Boy, he had all sorts of stuff going on in this page. 228. 229. Okay. Yeah, he had all sorts of uh, color holds going on. Big fight scene. Uh oh, crashed. I have to read this story. I haven't read this story in years. Uh, here's another. Here's this cover here. Let's pull this out. Here's that cover, and you can see. See all that uh, snow is in blue? That's the overlay. That's how they did it. So they could just, he did all this ink work on the vellum overlay so that it could all print blue easily. They could just take a photostat of this vellum, make it blue, 
photographically when they're making the printing plate and they're uh, good to go. Um, notice even how to tape out the UPC box. So that's, um, let's see how that craft tint. You can see all that, all that gray kind of disappears in the printed version, but you can see it there. Now that gives it that flashbacky nature. He was using thin lines for the flashback too. Wow, a lot of interesting storytelling with the images of him sleeping and the talking on the one side. Oh, here we are repeating that bed theme, except this time he's from from above, except this time he's sleeping outside in the alley. Uh, here's one of the yeah, let's just see if we can find that page. Oh, there it is. More blue snow and sky. I guess they have, whoops, there we go. There's the blue sky. There's the blue snow, which is on this overlay. Wow, this is just such a nice book. This. I'm a big fan of Mazzucchelli's art, or Mazzucchelli, whichever way it is. Hard C, soft C. I'm not sure which way he pronounces it. I've heard it both ways over the years, all the time, so. Mazzucchelli and Mazzucchelli. <laughs> wow, what a great finger-breaking face. Up another serpent. What is this? Up oh, there's that blue sky again. Yeah, let's see. That's on the last page of. Yep. I guess he liked that blue night sky with snow on it. I think these were all from uh, pulled from uh, the 2007 edition. Of, of a trade paperback. I think that's what they said originally. But wow. Once again, we're repeating that from above bed theme. Wow, beautiful. He can really make those darks dance around the page. Pennsylvania Station. And this is the first Mazzuchelli artwork I had ever seen. So he really blew me away when I first saw this. I was like, wow. He, of course, went on to do lots of great things, but uh, this was the first time I'd ever... I think he had started drawing Daredevil before. Ah, the old, what artist doesn't like blinds that make stripes? Um, I think he had started drawing Daredevil before Miller came on board, but I wasn't buying them, so... Oh, there's another sheet of vellum. Look at that. It's just, it's just a beautiful book. We'll just flip through the end because this is getting long. Oh, there's another. Ah, this is a sheet of vellum with all sorts of instructions on it of stats and type and this side of page set type in panel, then stat all at 100%. Remember, that's all instructions for putting TV screens in there. Beautiful Captain America shield and oh, this is the introduction of Nuke, who became the arch enemy in this one. Captain America shows up. Wow, this is all just beautiful stuff. Frank Miller, David Mazzucchelli, Max Sheila, Joe Rosen, Ralph Macchio, Jim Shooter. Well, here are all the credits for that. More zipatone. Whoops, some special lettering in there. This is, man, I could just look at this all day. Let's flip to the end. Kingpin all oh of course, rain. Who doesn't like the drama of rain? Alright, well, we're reaching the 15 minute mark. So uh 
I guess we'll end it here. And I hope you all guys all had a nice look at Born Again, Artist Edition.